Um, we just need one like three second smile for the thumbnail. Just oh. the camera. Okay, ready? Okay. Three, two, one, smile. Welcome back to another episode of All About Property, where we chat about property-related things. And this week, Helen, is a big one for Aucklanders. Mm, it sure is. So uh, I'm not quite sure if we've all been made aware, but recently, Auckland Council has made um, a public notice that they have got plans to actually look at doing some major changes to the way residential housing works in Auckland, um, which can you know, definitely make big changes to how we all live and travel in the future. Yeah. Mm. Now, some of you may have seen the ad run by Auckland Council. Tamaki Makoto is growing fast, and as our city grows, so does our need for a greater variety of new homes, so you can have more choices to live closer to the everyday things you need. You can watch the whole video and read about their plans on their website. I will put a link in the description below. Um, but before we tackle this, Keelan, I think we should probably tell the audience that this is only a proposal and that they will make the details of the proposal public by August. Yes, um, definitely got some time. Yeah. Still very early, so don't, don't start getting stressed and, and running out and fearing for your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they are wanting the public's opinion on this. So if you do want to have your say, go onto the website and send them a message. The biggest changing for housing is the intent to increase building heights and density in Auckland suburbs. Um, and the reason is simple, guys. Auckland is growing really fast. Yeah, like you said, Auckland is growing. And I mean, we've all seen over the last couple of years with the number of houses that are being sold, uh, the amount of new builds that are popping up. Auckland really is starting to push out and it really is starting to grow. Not only are they looking at allowing six story buildings uh, within the most central parts of Auckland, uh, they're also looking at extending the maximum height without resource consent for most standard residential suburbs of Auckland from two stories to three. Now, the re it is a really good proposal being in that. We're going to be able to start seeing a lot more houses built a lot closer to the city, which means that it's going to be easier for a lot more people to commute from out of town. Um, another benefit to that as well is that for our investors out there is that you're going to start being able to build you know, your two-story and your three-story developments a lot cheaper and a lot quicker because you don't have as much upfront costs with the council before you get planning. So there is a, yeah, there is a lot of benefits that come out of this, but I would say probably the big thing that we just need to make sure the council does right here is they can take care of the infrastructure to match. Because I mean, a lot of the roads out there at the moment, they are absolutely swamped full of cars every day. And we just got to make sure the roads are going to be wide enough to really to really take care of that and make sure we can all get to work on time. <laughs> yeah. Now, we've already been seeing a lot of townhouse style developments all over the city and even bigger sites outside of town. Um, now, there was one case in Rimira where a small community decided to take on the developer, take them to court because they deemed the build ugly and uh, not keeping in tune with their neighborhood style. Now, do you think there will be more resistance coming out of this proposal? Yeah, I definitely think for those people who have just got, you know, they've, they've just got their homes, this is it, this is their end all be all home, uh, you probably are going to start seeing a lot more resistance coming out of them. And I mean, it is fair, I mean, especially when a nice gigantic three story house is, or building, you know, is going up right next to your home, it's definitely not going to look pretty. Uh, unfortunately, that's the case yeah. for you know, a lot of construction, there's no real, real way to make it look pretty. Um, so, and I mean, that's probably one of the, the downsides for, uh, you know, standard mum and dad families is that you're going to start seeing a lot more of these houses and these big builds popping up right next to your home and you're probably not going to know about it till it's too late. Um, and that comes as a part of a fast growing city is that you're going to start seeing bigger and bigger things being built closer and closer to your own home. Um, and I think yeah, it is probably going to take a little, going to have a fair bit of resistance from the community, especially in the smaller suburbs. But for a lot of the big investors and developers out there, this is going to really be seen as a grace for them to mm. be able to build a lot quicker. So another huge problem we are facing right now is the building material shortage. So it means developments are taking a while to finish. Um, is it right though to assume that this Auckland's transformation is going to take much longer than we expect? Yeah, I don't think from the day of, you know, August, once it actually gets decided and what the actual plan is, is that we're immediately going to start seeing three-story buildings popping up next to our houses. I don't think it's going to turn around that quickly. Um, 
uh, yeah, and I wish I could have have my crystal ball in front of me and give us all the prediction on the exact future of where we're all <laughs> heading. But you know, at the moment, we are still in a lot of uh, a material shortage for construction. It is taking a lot longer than normal to do a lot of construction around Auckland. So I definitely don't think we're going to start seeing such an immediate reaction to this. We're definitely going to start seeing people planning for this a lot sooner if it does move forward. However, the actual effects, the actual construction and starting to see a physical result of this is probably going to take a number of years. Uh, unless after this recording, somebody turns around and says they found a, a crap ton of gym board laying underneath their deck and you know, <laughs> is facing all of Auckland's material <laughs> shortages. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely think it will take a slow while. I don't mm. think this is going to be such a sudden response. Um, but once in the future, a lot of these small suburbs are definitely going to start seeing bigger and bigger buildings start mm. to turn on their fair housing. Yeah, definitely. So it seems like the plan is to attract more and more people into the city and suburban centers. Now, unfortunately, it does mean the Kiwi dream of owning a home and having a big backyard, it's going to be much harder to find. Um, now, do you think, though, there are benefits to these changes that might ease people's minds? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, even if the, the biggest Kiwi dream is to be owning a house with lots of land, it doesn't mean that you still can't meet that dream to some extent. You're still going to be able to afford a home. You're still going to be able to own a place of your own. Um, and unfortunately, it just looks to be that the case going forward for the next wee while is that you may be looking somewhere smaller. For a lot of people starting out, that's fine. It's a small place, but it's a great beginning. But the biggest ones that I would say is for those that have already got existing properties or they're looking at purchasing a property really quite soon, you're going to see that you can now get a lot more value out of your property than what you could before. So before, you know, at the maximum, you could probably get away with two stories quite easily. So you'd only have two levels worth of income that you could possibly get out of it or, you know, number of sales if you're looking to sell. But now if we're starting to push into those three-story areas, there's a lot more that you can get out of your property. So for investors, they're gonna start seeing a lot more value be added to their properties if they're in the suburban areas and they've got the space. But for those that are looking to buy, right now, while this proposal is still in discussions, now would be a really nice time to get yourself a house. Because if it's going to be a site which could look to do that kind of development where you're pushing up to those three stories later down the line, you've got the space, you're ready to go, and you can take on this before the investors and the larger scale people yep. with a lot more capital behind them come in there and they decide to buy the properties before you. So it's definitely about whether or not you choose to wait and see or whether you choose to be reactive. And for those that choose to be reactive, early bird gets the worm. Yep. You've got to take that chance and you've got to see where it can get you. We've only covered a small section of this proposal. So if you do want to read a bit more about it, do visit their website. But in the meantime, Keelan, thanks for coming in and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. See you guys.